morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Young and Dynamic. I'm super excited to welcome you all, Dynamites, our HLF or Delta staff, and our executive connected from anywhere and everywhere around the globe. My name is Ntai Singh, and I will be your host. Now, before we delve deep into the session today, let me set out the housekeeping rules. Make sure you have a notebook and a pen or an iPad to write notes. A leader carries a notebook to every meeting. I would like to remind you to ensure your gadget is on mute at all times unless you've asked to speak by the facilitators. In case you're leaving the meeting briefly, kindly switch off your camera and then switch it back on when you are back. The chat box, which is at the bottom of your screen, is available for your use and will take note of those comments and take relevant action needed. Direct any questions you may have to the chat box. We have a team going through the chat box and they will respond to your questions as required. Now let me allow, like allow, allow me to give this opportunity to Anna to lead us in prayer. Over to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Tavi Singh. Hello, everyone, and I'm super excited uh, to be leading you in prayer. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, as dynamite, we are so much away. Uh, this week, we are saddened by the passing away of uh, a youth, uh, Gary M. And a lot of people have been putting statuses, rest in peace. And so to just like to encourage us that um, as youth, let's learn to love others and show them love while you they are still alive. Because all the statuses that have been placed on the social media and how he's trending, if he had seen that while he's still alive, he was going to cry for real. Uh, so let's learn to love one another. That's one of the prayer points I'm going to do. Uh, praying about. So let's spread love to that artist that you know, uh, support them while they are still alive. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you so much for today and thank you, mighty God, that being alive on its own is a miracle. Lord, we pray and ask that, Father, may you teach us how to love people even if when it is difficult, almighty God. Father, we pray that, Father, help us to express love even to the random people that you meet and even to the most difficult people, Almighty God. May we express our love to them, O oh my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. We thank you, Almighty God, that it is you who first showed us love and you gave the only begotten Son to die for our sins. We pray that, Lord Almighty God, may we spread this love for God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord Almighty God, we thank you for your great promises that are also in your way, Almighty God. Father, you say, we should not worry about what we will eat or what we will wear, O King of Kings. And you even make reference that the beds of the air, they do not store up food, but they are, they are always fed, O King of Kings, and are we not important more than the beds? Father, Lord, I pray for whoever might be disheartened, Almighty God, being worried about what tomorrow holds for them, Almighty God. But may they be strengthened and know that they've got a heavenly Father who wants to protect them and who cares for them, who even knows each and every hair strength on their head, on their head, O King of Kings, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father Lord, may we wait patiently for you and always know that when the time is right, you, Lord, will make it happen, Almighty God. And that hardships only just come for a season, Almighty God, and time to rejoice and to be happy shall also be there, O King of Kings. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I ask that, Lord, when we are feeling down, may we lift up our spirit and may we always hope and have our eyes glued on you, Father. For you are faithful and you are a God who never fails not to support. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your messages that are fresh each and every morning, O King of Kings. And we thank you, Almighty God, that your love we cannot fathom. Great are the works of thy hands, Almighty God. We pray that may you take the lead in our lives, Almighty God, for you have but perfect will for each and every one of us. Praying for the session that Lord Almighty God may you touch and be with the speaker. Open our hearts, Almighty God, so that we might be ready to receive, Almighty God, and act upon what we are taught. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anna. Now, today is an important session. Today's guest is going to wire you all. And if anyone had the rule that said, have a book and a pen to write down and didn't have it, please rush and get that pen because our guest for today 
is a youth pastor at Celebration Church, and he has an experience of over 25 years in investing in youth and future generations with leadership compared to your English. He's also the current HLF Zimbabwe Country Director. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Pastor Pilani, our guest for today. Very good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad to be here and thank you very much to YD for inviting me. I do not take it lightly and I deeply appreciate uh, the leadership of um, YND and High Life Foundation for allowing me to come onto the platform today. So today I'm going to be taking you on a journey of High Life Foundation, who they are, what they do, and what you uh, can also begin to find your place uh, in High Life Foundation. So I'm excited to be sharing that. I'm stepping into the uh, I'm stepping into the shoes uh, of the visionary here, and uh, it's an exciting uh, step to be taking. And uh, I hope I'm able to articulate the vision, but also inspire and motivate each and every one of you to come to the full understanding of this amazing vision that we are all, uh, in one sense or the other, uh, finding ourselves uh, linked to. So I know we've got different people. Some people are, are from school right now in boarding. Others are at university. Others are at uh, a home that looks after children, others are in their homes, others are at school. So you may be in different places and I'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to find you and locate you in this great vision. So I'll take you right from the top. So as someone said, have a pen and a paper. There are certain words that I've colored differently. I want you to uh, begin to appreciate those words clearly. Uh, and as I articulate them, I sh I'm sure you will find your place there. So when people ask you what High Life Foundation is, you've got to have the right answer. Some of us just say it's a scholarship organization. That's wrong. <laughs> that used to be cup and I'm trust. <laughs> That's what you could say about it. But I want you to understand High Life Foundation is a social impact organization. Okay. So when people ask you what High Life Foundation is, I would like you to be able to appreciate and answer it in this manner, that it's a social impact organization. Now, taking each one of those words is very important. Why is social important? Because social has to do with humanity. We all grow up in a society. And in that society, we are socialized in one way or the other. So the word social helps us. For, I'm sure some students who are doing social studies at university would get excited or who are doing social work would get excited because they would know exactly uh, what this definition means. And they will probably have a better definition than I have. But my layman uh, explanation of that word is that it has to do with human interaction. From humans to humans, amongst humans, about humans. So social is that we are working with people in different communities, societies, in different backgrounds, different countries, uh, different cities. We are working with people. What for? Impact. Our desire and our vision is to realize impact. So every one of our programs, including this one that we are having right now, must reflect impact. Now, impact is uh, profound change within something. Again, you can go to the dictionary and try and find out what the word impact means. But impact, if I do that, there is impact. My hands have created impact. Right now, as I'm speaking, the words that I'm speaking leave an impression upon your heart, your mind, and ears. That is impact. So we are for social impact, impact amongst people, impact amongst communities, impact amongst nations. That's what we are about. That's what we stand for. Organization, of course, means it's a structured organization. It's a business. We're not an NGO. <laughs> but we are a social impact organization. What do we do? We invest in human capital. So we go back to the issue of social, human, people, communities. So our focus is human capital. Even this 
program right now has to do with human capital. What is human capital? Human capital is the investment that you put inside a person. Investment for betterment, investment for improvement, investment for ensuring that there's growth and development amongst that young people that young person or that person or that community. So every program that we run primarily looks at social impact for human capital. Why are we looking at those? The next colored words, to build thriving individuals, communities, and sustainable livelihoods. So the question I would have is, are you thriving as a result of your interaction with High Life Foundation? I met um, Nicole Peel's mom uh, this morning. Nicole uh, is part of our star cohort. She has now moved on to um, Harare International School. And so I said, how is Nicole? The mom says, my gosh, she is thriving. We are all thriving. We are walking in the air is what the mom said. Why? Because not in their wildest imagination did they ever think that their daughter would one day go to Harare International uh, College or Harare International School. They were at convent, they were content, and they were happy with private school education, and their dreams were aligned to those limitations of that school. Coming to High Life Foundation, we talked about social impact, we talked about human capital, their dreams are uh, all of a sudden accelerated, are uh, all of a sudden uplifted. The opportunities begin to come. Nicole, you can go to our international school. You can go to uh, St. George's. You can go to Gateway. You can go to Waterford. Options that never really were a reality in one's mind become a reality. That's what we mean by building thriving individual. So no matter where you are right now, if you are interacting with us, High Life Foundation, we are aiming for you to be a thriving individual. So you find that our programming looks at every aspect of the individual that we engage. Not only individuals, but we know that once individuals begin to thrive, guess what? Communities begin to thrive. So already, Excuse my example, Nicole, I didn't ask for your permission if you're mine. It now means your siblings, your little brothers and sisters can begin to dream differently. They now see you from the primary school, even if you go to your primary school that you went to and say, oh, I'm now at Harare International School. People say, what's that? And then you have to begin to explain. There is this exclusive school in Harare. It was started for diplomatic children. <laughs> now, this school is where I'm going. Are your parents diplomats? No. <laughs> Are your parents millionaires? No. Are your parents dreamers? Yes. Because the very fact that they took you out of your normal lower six, upper six part of school and say, go and try this star leadership thing called uh, star leadership means they're dreamers. And already that community is thriving. What for sustainable livelihoods? So we look at you. I can almost name every one of the individuals in those pictures below because I've had interactions with each and every one of them. And I'm telling you what, you look at who they are and where they are at, each one of them is thriving in one way or the other. I've also underlined and highlighted founded by Strive and Sitsimasio because it's important to know where the vision comes from. This vision has founders. And these founders are Dr. Strive and Mrs. Tsitsi Masiwa. These are Zimbabweans who dared to dream, who dared to listen to a voice of instruction, who dared to take a risk with minimum resources and start a work towards building thriving individuals, communities, and sustainable livelihoods. When they started, they may not have clarified the statements as it sounds today. They may have just started by saying, well, we want to do something nice, something good to offer children or children in homes or orphanages. 
So we will have lunch for them. We'll buy them school uniforms. And if we can, we'll send some of them to school. It's also important to note that Mr. Strive and Ms. Tsitsimasiwa, before they started Econet, started the work of High Life Foundation. So the work of Econet came after they had started the work of High Life Foundation. It's important for you to understand that. So some say, oh, you started because you had money in Econet. No, <laughs> they started when they didn't have the money. So sometimes your vision is stifled by you saying, I'm waiting for the money to come. My pastor always says, Money follows ideas. <laughs> so if you don't have ideas, then money is not going to come. So it was founded by Mr. Strive and Mrs. Tsitsimasio, Zimbabwean, uh, Shona, Black, like you and me. They started this work. So what does it mean and what does it give us? It, it gives us the dream to say, you know what? It, this can be me. Can you imagine the kind of dreams that you're sitting on by not doing anything, by not believing, by not investing in them? Can you imagine the kind of ideas, kind of uh, life-changing visions that God has given to each and every one of us? Right now, there are 406 or 404 uh, connections and possibly that will translate to 800 or 1,000 people because some are in groups. If each and every one of these people dares to dream like Mr. Stripe and Mrs. Tsitsimasiwa did. Can you imagine the human capital impact that will begin to take place in our communities, in our nations, and in the world? So this was started in 1996. And lastly, I underlined Christian faith. 15 minutes and I'm only on two sentences. That's just how big the vision is. I might not even need to go through the rest of the six slides I had prepared for you. But Christian faith is very important. Every person has an identifier in terms of what is their moral and ethical compass. Each one of us right now here has a compass that leads us, a value system that drives everything that we do. You've got to ask yourself a question. What is your value campus? What is your value status? For the Masiwas, it was their Christian faith. Good afternoon, team. As we are waiting for Pastor Philan to come back, um, you know, most of us, we do have uh, questions about our uh, Higher Life Foundation and, uh, you know, uh, what does it does and uh, how best we can uh, connect uh, with the vision. So I want to take this opportunity to, to gather one or two questions so as we as we are going to present uh, these questions to, to Pastor Plan when he comes back, 
So uh, for those who are able to, you know, to unmute, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can raise your hand and unmute so that we we could uh, are able to, you know, to give you the opportunity or the time to take over. Do we have uh, people who have uh, we have questions? Okay, beautiful. So uh, I'll start by praise Shito. Uh, praise quiet and ask your question. Hello, good afternoon. Afternoon praise, how are you doing? I'm doing great. What I have is, is not a question, it's just, um, what, what should I call it? Maybe a contribution or something like that. Um, Considering the vision that um, Pastor Pilani was talking about, um, I just wanted to say that um, I think our life is really doing something so great for us. And as a whole, we just feel so grateful for everything that is being done. And they're grooming us so well. So we just feel so grateful for everything that they are doing. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, our praise, uh, for such kind of a good gesture. Uh, thank you for you know appreciating the work of of Ayala Foundation. Um, I'm ending off at this time again to uh, Shamukuza and and Mamvura of uh, MSU for one. Um, over to you. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, hello. How are you? Hello. How are you, Shamukuza and Mamvura? How are you doing? Hello. Okay. Can you Hello, hear me? how are you, Chamukuza? Ah, we are good. Well, I, I wanted to say that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Ah, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Chamukuza. You can, you know, type your questions in the chat box uh, so that we can proceed. And uh, we are welcoming big uh, pastor plan. We are trying to, you know, to gather the questions about um, uh, the vision. So our only praise is managed to, you know, to give a, a thank you for hand to the vision and uh, to the impact that you've done. I'm getting over the platform to take to you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, so, so I think we'd ended on Christian faith uh, as an identifier. And I think I'd uh, left a challenge to say, what's your identifier as a person? What's your, what drives your vision? What drives your, the decision-making? Uh, how do you make your decisions? There are many different ways of making decisions. It could be secular. Secular, you're basically just using the morals and the values of the world that you live in. It could be ancestral. <laughs> Some people go and um, go and consult their ancestral spirits. Uh, it, it could be it could be it could be demonic that the people consult the devil for making their decisions. Uh, whereas for Mr. and Mrs. Matsio, they derive their decision making. Uh, direction and directors from their beliefs and their conviction in Jesus Christ. And then as we do that, uh, it's it's important for each and every person to have that identifier. And so because of your association with us, our we say in this is the, this is what happens in our organization. This is who we are. That's how we make decisions. That's how we fellowship. That's how we interact. That's where we derive our values, our ethos. That's where we derive everything that we're doing, our ethics are guarded by the word of God. That's our identifier. Anywhere across the world, we are unashamed by who we are, that we are Christian faith. So we do not bow down to anybody or say, no, no, no. Uh, in order for you to work with us, you've got to be like this, or you can't say God, or you can't say Jesus. We say, no, no, this is who we are. Our meetings start by prayer. Our meetings end by prayer. That's who we are. We do use our common sense and our sensitive. We do not discriminate and we do not uh, belittle anyone based on their beliefs. But we just say this is who we are because that's where we started from. So it's important for you to appreciate that. Uh, once you begin to talk about High Life Foundation and you want to represent us, you've got to look at your convictions. Uh, you've got to look at your beliefs and you've got to look at your values. And then we, uh, we secondly, as High Life Foundation, we are an African foundation. And we believe we are moving the continent forward through opportunities that are presented to us. And so you'll find that our core uh, pillars are a response to what's happening 
in Africa and in the world. So we also are unashamedly African in that sense. For the longest time ever, we've always known that impact and change comes from the West or from the East, from everywhere else except from Africa. For a long time, Africa was called a dark continent. For a long time, Africans were considered they can't mount anything, they can't be philanthropists, they don't have money, they don't, can't think. They, so we, we also want to make sure that people understand that we are from Africa, we are based in Africa. Our headquarters in Africa, our work studied in Africa, our work is driven by our Africanism uh, or, you know, or that person. So we do this through investments in the four pillars. And the four pillars, I will go through in de detail with them if needs be, are education, health, uh, rural transformation, and sustainable livelihoods. Uh, they may have changed and they continue to change because that's how we are. We are dynamic uh, in disaster relief and preparedness. So that, dynami that dynamism continues to help us always ensure we are contextual, we are up to date with our thoughts. So sometimes I may be actually left a little bit behind by the progression of the work. Uh, but we continue to redefine that and we continue to learn to ensure that when we articulate the vision, we are always on point in the way we do it. So we do have a vision, a mission and values. And that vision is, our vision is to provide a platform for people to fulfill their God-given purpose. So that already means each and every one of the 454 of you connections right here, we believe we are convicted that you have a God-given purpose. So everything that we do is very intentional to ensure that each and every one of you fulfills their God-given purpose. God has a shape for you, which means that he's given you a spirit. He has given you a heart. He has given you attitudes and abilities. He has given you power and provisions. He has given you everything that you require in order for you to accomplish great things here on earth. So whenever I interact with any one of you, the first thing that I begin to look at is what is your God-given purpose? So I listen very intently. I look at everything that you're doing. I listen to your comments so that I can begin to identify that God-given purpose so that when I am going to do whatever I do, whether it's lecturing, speaking, counseling, encouraging, uh, giving advice, I am doing it from the point of view that enables you to achieve your God-given your God -given purpose. And our mission is to invest in human capital, to build thriving individuals, communities, and sustainable livelihoods. So that's how we're going to do this. That's how we're going to ensure that people fulfill their God-given purpose by investing in human capital. And human capital is a very important aspect because what it does is that it reflects on our belief that there is value inherent in each and every individual. Each individual is worth their salt. In other words, they're worth a billion dollars and more in terms of ideas, capacity, capability, opportunities, you are far worth than what you look like in the mirror. And this is not to do with the amount of money in your bank account. It has nothing to do with the kind of clothes you wear, the kind of drive, 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 car you drive. But this has to do with what we believe God has placed inside each and every one of you. I was listening to one of the guys who came here and told us that we probably on Wang and DNA was telling us that we probably only use a quarter of our brain power. In other words, we are very conscious, only maybe a quarter of the time. The rest we are operating from the subconscious. We need to come into the conscious to become creative and begin to achieve the great things that God has purposed for each and every one of us. And of course, our values are one, faith in God, number two, execution. So we are not just talk, talk, talk people but we believe in doing the work. So you find that whenever you meet any one of us, we are in the field, we are doing the work. We are not just talking or preaching, but we are actually doing the work. Integrity, integrity has to do with solidness of honesty in each and every person. Who we are is what we do. We don't say one thing and do the other thing. We are very honest. 
we are fully audited as an organization. We are accountable. There, there are structures that are strong that help us to build that accountability as an organization. We believe in the value of love. Love is that quality that appreciates and accepts each and every individual as God has created them. Love is just not the gooey, gooey emotions, but love is an expression. It's the way we do things. It's why we do the things that we do. We believe in knowledge. We, we're a learning organization. Every person that we come across, every organization, we believe that we can learn from them. We also believe in knowledge in the sense that we are part and parcel of people creating knowledge in social impact. So our work is data-driven. We record, we write, we research, and we, as a result, we contribute to new knowledge that helps people do the work that they do better. Accountability, I've already explained that. Collaboration, we believe that we can't do it on our own. We need other people. We need networks. We need other organizations. We've done similar work to what we're doing. We've got before us. We, we believe that each and every individual is an active um, part of the work that we're doing. And then, of course, responsive leadership. Responsive leadership speaks into we see problems and we start thinking solutions. We do not wait or point fingers or blame anybody else. So we're not going to wait for the government to be correct or for the government to be what people want it to be. We step into where the need is needed the most and we start doing the work. We start meeting the needs. We start creating the solutions. So that's it about Hyala Foundation. And I just wanted to give you that brief summary for you to have a clear picture on who we are. The timelines, this helps into some of the things that I've spoken about so that you can just see the history of where we're coming from. But when you look at those entities, I hope it paints a picture to you that you are part of something powerful, something great, something big. And so we started off as Carpenter Trust. And then CCPT, Christian Community Partnership Trust, was started. And then the Joshua Nkomo Scholarship was started. And then the National Healthcare Trust was started. If you look at all those four, they speak into the responsiveness of the leadership that this organization is about. Each one of those was a response to a challenge or to a problem or to a need for that particular time. It then culminated into 2011 into the organization called Higher Life Foundation, raising Afri the Africans' future leaders through education. Burundi was started in 2010 in offers so was open then. Lesotho was open in 2019. And we now have a Kenyan office where our headquarters is. So we are not stagnant, but we are growing, we are developing, we are expanding. So when you look at yourself, you are part of something significant, something part of something great. We are going pan-African because we believe there is a space and a place for each and every one of us to be part of. And we believe that we can also begin to contribute to the much needed answers and responses that Africa is crying for. There is so much that can be given and can be done for the emancipation, development, and growth of Africa. You and I are part and parcel of that solution providing part of the continent. We've come through Muzinda Hub, which was a training tech uh, people or tech fundies, people who are interested in technology based solutions that were required in people. We had Rezivo which was looking at providing uh, access to education for every single individual in Africa, liquid intelligent scholarships that were started in Kenya uh, that are currently also happening in uh, Swaziland where we send students and we have a consistent number of 25 to 27 students at any given time uh, under the scholarship in Swaziland. We currently have just over 20 students in Kenya, and we're looking at uh, recruiting more to keep those numbers up and going. Star Leadership Academy, uh, one of our latest babies, thriving and uh, spearheading some incredible um, leadership development because we looked at what one of Africa's major problems, and we thought leadership was one of those glaring problems. So Star Leadership Academy is shaping, challenging, 
and cultivating in these young people a desire and a love to be great responsive leaders in their lives, in their communities, and in the continent. Delta Philanthropies, uh, a Delta Doctoral Fellowship was launched where we are sponsoring students to study, postgraduate study. Remember, I talked about us being contributors to knowledge development. And our PhD students are part and parcel of that cohort of people who are beginning to contribute to knowledge in particular areas that we believe will benefit the rest of Africa, education, health, disaster responsiveness, and of course, you guess it, social studies. And then we also formulated the cholera secretariat. As, uh, remember I talked about our responsiveness to whatever needs. What started off in 20, 2008 as National Healthcare Trust, the vision, uh, the execution strategy, the programming has changed. And now we have this big uh, solution that we have created or means uh, to be able to respond to whatever needs uh, the continent may have in the health uh, in the health sector, and then reimagine rural, uh, a thriving uh, social impact, uh, or, you know, program that goes into the areas and begins to talk about uh, sustainable uh, and climate uh, climate friendly uh, agriculture, responding to the needs of uh, the ever changing climate challenges that the world is facing and beginning to help people that the way you used to do agriculture 50 years ago cannot be the same because the environment has changed, the needs have changed, uh, and, and therefore there needs to be a, a change in terms of how do we continue to do agriculture that's sustainable. And from that basis, understanding that a bigger percentage of Africa's economy is agro-based. So if we begin to look at people and say there is life in the soil, many uh, innovations and many entrepreneurial uh, programs can be started with a relation to the, to the, to the uh, basic uh, uh, provisions that God has given us uh, in, in, in our country, you know, which is our weather, which is our soil, abundant uh, arable land, water that's freely available, fresh water that is freely available. With those things, we can, we can begin to change and transform our rural areas. That's why it's called reimagined rural. Can you begin to reimagine the way you look at a rural area? Many of us, when we think of rural areas, we begin to think, ah, it's going backwards, no electricity, no water, difficult lives. You know, say, no, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Let's begin to challenge people to actually consider and, and, and think about, you know, can we begin to have urban to rural <laughs> migration? We're so used to rural to urban migration to the extent that our urban areas are so inundated they're so cramped can we begin to think about rural urban to rural migration where your rural home is just as good as an urban home that's very possible but that takes a mind shift shift uh, where you think about can that be possible and it's a great possibility and then in terms of our disaster responsiveness um We've also looked at uh, how we can be a solution when it comes to public health emergencies. Our response to cholera, COVID, has given us opportunity to, to again practice our responsive leadership and say, can we be leaders in ensuring that when there's a pandemic, when there's uh, a health challenge, we respond to that. And as a result, we've partnered with many organizations to the extent that we are spearheading things like uh, mass drug administration for certain sicknesses that uh, disable people from being fully productive if they're not dealt with. Some of them can be easily dealt with, with self-medication being part of those solutions. And then, of course, Akelo. Akelo is the redefinition of Rezio, much better, much improved uh, platform to provide access to education. And then in 2022, we launched Moshweshwe Scholarship there. Uh, not the equivalent, but something unique in the uh, kingdom nation of Lesotho, where we have onboarded up to now 20 students uh, who are in themselves stars in the making. Uh, incredible young people we believe will be benefiting the nation of Lesotho with their intelligence, with their ideas, with their selflessness in that country. And then, of course, I talked about opening a country office in Kenya, 
uh, as we begin to look at our expansion, as we look at our growth, uh, sometimes you have to get out of a certain situation in order to see better, in order to uh, broaden your platform for relationships and uh, how you can be part of that. And then, of course, the National Emergency Operations Center, uh, which we have launched, uh, we contributed to the building of possibly one of the uh, strongest building in the nation of Zimbabwe. And from this building, we want to see a nerve center that will respond to any sort of emergency in sub-Saharan uh, sub Africa, uh, primarily for Zimbabwe because of what happened in Chimani Mani, where we found ourselves not prepared for that disaster that took place. And said, we can be, again, solution providers. So friends, that is the basis of Who Highlight Foundation. And what can you do? What is your part? I just have a very simple answer to that. Stop seeing yourself as a beneficiary. That's my solution. What can you do? How can you be part and parcel of this? You're already part of it. But I want you from today onwards to stop seeing yourself as a beneficiary, but start seeing yourself as a partner. Stop seeing yourself as a beneficiary, start seeing yourself as a partner. That is the burden that I have for you. What's the difference? A beneficiary is somebody who is needy and who has no capacity to involve to give or to participate. They're just on the receiving end. The beneficiary just receives and does nothing. They just receive, 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 and does nothing. Whereas a partner contributes. A partner contributes. They contribute through their ideas. They contribute by making use of the opportunity that they've been given to excel and do great things. A partner goes and moves and enters into opportunities, but does not forget where they are coming from. Does not forget who has built a bridge for them. Does not forget the values that have ensured that they get what they have today. That's what a partner does. But a beneficiary, as soon as they are given their sadza, they forget where that sadza came from. They're looking for more sadza. They're looking for more meat. They're looking for more school fees. But a partner will say, you know what? I have been assisted for five, 10 years. I'm going to ensure that my little brother will never be in need of school fees. So I'm going to pay for their school fees. I'm going to also go to my old school. I'm going to introduce them to some of the things that I learned is critical to the development of human capital. That's what a partner does. But a beneficiary just says, well, thank you very much. Bye, I'm gone. And they're gone. And you never hear from them again. And you never see from them. Every time you see them, they need something else. That's what a beneficiary does. But a partner will say, you know what? Thank you so much for this opportunity. Let me look at what I can possibly do as a result of the opportunities that I've got. And they begin to participate. They give back. They mention where they're coming from. They are proud to be associated with a particular brand. And in this case, Hyla Foundation. We know some people who've totally forgotten that they ever received from Hyla Foundation. Some take something to remind them to say, oh, okay, by the way, <laughs> they helped me to be where I am. But a partner never forgets. So that's my answer to that. And so when I was asked to speak about it, I thought, let me explain, take, go to length to explain this and then come back and say, what can you do? What can you do? Stop being a beneficiary, start being a partner. When you do that, we begin to practice responsive leadership together. We become social impact individuals. We begin to become part and parcel of enhancing human capital so that individuals thrive, communities thrive, the continent thrives. I'd like to stop there and see if there are any questions that have come through. Uh, Tinasha, you can help me. 
and then I'll try and answer those questions to the best of my ability. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, there's one question uh, that has been posted uh, through the chat box, and I would like uh, other people also to, you know, to post as Pastor is also responding to those yeah. questions. So the question goes like, how often do HLF recruit from primary school? Is there a routine that people need to follow? Thank you very much. There is a routine. So our practice is that our primary school scholarship is open throughout the year, but our intakes are staggered. As, remember I said we are accountable. So it means we work with a budget. We don't have a bottomless pit of money just sitting to send somebody to school. So we have a budget which we are allocated from resources that are raised by Delta Philanthropies. So Delta Philanthropies is the family office. Mr. and Mrs. Masiwa have put up a structure to look for funding uh, so that we are able to continue uh contributing to human capital development and in this case this question is associated with one of the key pillars of our human capital development which is education and in education we believe in providing access uh, quality education and leadership development in that it's something that i would have gone into but i am happy to come back next week and go into those specifics so that you know what happens in each pillar so the primary school scholarship is open all year round but intakes are possibly once a year. Uh, so we can't be intaking all year round because first of all, there are almost about 1 million or so young people in primary school and possibly that number need scholarships as well. So we can't have 1 million scholarship, it's unsustainable. So we have to think carefully and be accountable to those who've entrusted us with resources to be able to, to stagger our intakes. Um, to, to, to match the resources that would have been allocated. We've just completed an intake in the past few months uh, for the year 2023. Um, so usually at the beginning of the year, that's where those intakes take place. But our application is open throughout the year. And that's why we've put it online so that anybody can apply it anytime online. And then considerations will be made when the next intake happens. Thank you, I hope I've answered that question. It's the same with all our other scholarships as well, uh, besides the Joshua Nkomo, which advertises the Star Leadership Academy, which also advertises around about June, July, August. And then their intake for Star is currently taking place for January. And therefore, that's a different uh, scholarship altogether. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And then there's a question. Is there more information about postgraduate start scholarship? Uh, the information is always available online. When we have an intake, we advertise it online. That way it stops us from being inundated with application. And these are very specific and very cyclical uh, in nature. So right now we have a current code of five students. Uh, that's just how specific and how competitive it, it, it takes place. So every five years, we take in a new cohort of five students, very specific areas and your track record has to be impeccable. It's just not anybody who wants to do a master's or PhD. You've got to be excelling in those studies to be considered for that. But again, it's advertised uh, online quite widely. Um, I think the current cohort is in their third or fourth year, and then we'll be intaking again, maybe in a year or two years time. And then there's also, thank you so much, Pastor. And there's also a question says, a, a partner is a team player in the contributor. So are we the partners to young in dynamic? Absolutely, that's what I mean. So your attendance already shows that you're a partner. You've committed yourself to partnering. And next steps to that is if you build enough partnership strength and muscle, you don't have to phone Tinashe to say, I don't have air time, I can't join y and &D. <laughs> the partner says, you know what, I'll do my best to join y and &D. And we, that's where we are slowly getting to. Right now, we continue to provide some people with access by giving uh, air time. And it's because we've got the resources that we've been given to be able to do that. But a step further of a partner is to say, you know what, I'm actually going to fund my primary school or my high school that I used to. I'm going to give them air time so that they can join. 
That's what a partner does. That's how you grow. That's how we thrive. But we are in the still thing that I'm a beneficiary. That's why I want. I came to challenge you that you're not a beneficiary, but a partner. But if you remain a beneficiary, guess what? Every weekend, you're going to be phoning Mkoma Tinash. I need airtime bundles. And if they don't come, you don't join. They, it, they, that's what a beneficiary does. And if you're not called or reminded, you don't join. You don't come. That's what a beneficiary does. But a partner, they will remember. They will remind other people. They will take initiative. And they will use some of their resources to also join. People then say, ah, but I don't have any money. Well, I'll see you on Facebook. I'll see you on Twitter. I'll see you on Instagram. You've got money for that. Why not money for YND? <laughs> I'm just here to greatly challenge you, each and every one of you. That's true. There are a lot of questions coming from the chat box. So we, within the next 10 minutes, we'll try to answer them. There's a question from, um, from Tulo says, emphasis was put on ILA Foundation being a social impact organization. In your own opinion, to what degree has ILA achieved its vision? Well, to a really amazing degree. Take into consideration that we are in Africa, we're in Zimbabwe, where we've had socio-political issues going on, to have been able to impact over 300,000 young people with access to quality education. Uh, some of those are now parents, industry leaders. Some of those are now changing the world. Some of those are now running their own programs. Some of them similar to Highlight Foundation and they're thriving in those. We have young, someone was saying, if you take a stone and throw it in the city of Bulawa or Mutare or Zimbabwe, you are likely to hit that stone on a history maker or a Joshua Nkomo scholarships or someone who has been influenced in one way or the other by Africa. So I believe that we have been able to achieve this impact to a great deal. And you know what? We think we can do even better. That's why we continue to do what we're doing. I believe the impact has been realized. We can even do better. That's why we're a learning organization working at improving our systems, working at improving of our recording of our impact stories and success stories. And therefore, the future can only be brighter. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor. And then there's another question. It says, if someone is subjected to a situation which will cause that person to fail to pay his or his school fees while he is already enrolled to a certain tertiary institution, will that person be able to be part of ILA Foundation and how? It's possible. Um, it's very possible. But also, as I remember, I said we can't help everybody who has a need. Um, there are sometimes when, we, when we've been responsive, a case has come out on Facebook, so and so got 10 A's and they need help to go to university. Sometimes we've responded and say we can assist and onboard on board that person onto our scholarship. If you are already enrolled and you are within our um, uh, selection criteria, uh, which have to do with uh, one, your status, are you vulnerable? If you're going on the uh, Kapenam Fellow uh, Scholarship, if you're vulnerable, if you're orphaned, uh, if, if, if you, uh, if you, if you have good grades, if it's for a, for, for university, what grades do you have for a level and you're below the age of 21, you certainly can be considered. Uh, but as I say, like any other scholarship, we have our own, um, requirements and they're very clear on our, on, on, on our, on, on our website, highlight on the foundation.org. Thank you so much, Pastor. And then uh, the last question is that uh, as a partner, am I able to contribute towards the vision? Is there any route or any way that I can contribute towards the vision? Absolutely. So as an organization, one of our values is that we don't ask for donations. Uh, remember I said we are a faith-based organization. So our patrons have made it very clear. We're not going to ask for donations. But how you can contribute is by you saying, you know what, I've gone back to my primary school where I came from and I'm now paying school fees for five children. <laughs> or I've gone back to the secondary school that I, I, I learned it and I adopted two top students and I'm paying their fees. I'm making sure they've got books. I'm making sure they've got a uniform. And, and I, I spoke to the school. And that's the way you partner with us. And that's how you can contribute. 
to what we're doing because we're looking at human capital development. So you can begin to do your part or to say, you know what, I've actually a fourth year student uh, and I'm doing medicine and I've decided to go and mentor uh, students in my school who are doing sciences and STEM subjects. So I'm beginning to do that. And uh, so there's always opportunity and that 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 is the opportunity that's available for you to partner with us. So already you can then begin to tell your story. Guess what? I'm a High Life Foundation student. And this is what I've done as a result of being a partner with High Life Foundation. I've gone back to all the schools that are in my district and I'm doing mentorship classes systematically. And this is how I'm doing those mentorship classes. What am I teaching them? We can give you the material. We actually have a handbook for life skills that we have developed to make it easy for you. <laughs> so you can use that and you say, it's 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 got eight topics, I think. And you can actually say, I've taken them through these eight topics after, when they're finished, they should be able to plan uh, their goals. They should be able to uh, know their career. They should be able to have great understanding of who they are, their self image, and they should have a relationship with God. So we've got a handbook for that. And it's uh, it's available as soft copy. Just talk to Mr. Tinashe or Mr. Monashe. As long as we are able to use it, uh, some people have started charging money to say, I, I want to be a consultant and I want to facilitate life skills, but I have to charge you $500,000 or $500. No, that, that's wrong. A partner doesn't do that. You, you go and give of yourself, learn to volunteer. If you do monetize your gift, that's good. But sometimes we are also encouraging people to volunteer uh, their time. Uh, thank you so pastor I, I i lastly i wanted to say it was the last question but i think you need also to answer this question it says uh hlf is an epitome of a catalyst for change what aspects should the hlf fellow focus on to be a partner and not just a beneficiary excellent uh if you looked at our vision it talks about thriving individuals communities and nations so what elements can you focus on? How can I build thriving individuals, communities, and nations? How can I contribute to that? Well, you can inspire people. You can tell your story. You can contribute financially, as I said, remember. You can volunteer where you're required to. But guess what? You can even begin to think bigger than that. And we are not partisan in any way. But we encourage people to take part in civic and social affairs so that they can begin to contribute to the development and well-being of their nations. Some of you have been given the brains, the ability, the capacity to go to the highest level of whatever, whether it's in industry, medicine, school, whether it's in philanthropy, whether it's in social work, do it to the best of your cap capability. That's how we can go on and begin to do that. We have been called to different things. We Remember we said each and every one of us has a unique and different purpose. And, and therefore, our purpose are not limited by one person. Uh, they are can be anywhere. I am hoping one of these days we'll hear that a, a, a High Life Foundation fellow is now sitting in the United Nations, influencing and impacting decisions decision-making at a global level. If we can have young people going in to become junior parliamentarians or members of parliament, excellent. But it does not then say we are shaping people in this particular political uh, persuasion. What we want is the development of communities and of the nation. When you do it, remember our values, God-fearing, integrity, remember uh, love, knowledge, those are our values. So if you're doing it within those values, then there's nothing wrong with that, you know, uh, as long as we remain value driven. And we've talked about our, uh, our greatest value, which is faith in God. As long as it's done on the premise of fearing God, then, you know, we are aligned and we are attuned and you can become a true partner in building uh, thriving individuals, communities and nations. Thank you so much, Pastor, for you know answering all the questions that have come through this chat box. And I'm seeing people like Marilyn, Simbarashi, Nancy, just typing in the chat box. I'm I'm motivated, I'm challenged. And I saw lots of questions of, 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 of comments in this chat box saying we are no longer beneficiaries and we are partners. As for me, I become partner when I when I was introduced to Young and Dynamic, I think six or seven years ago, I said, you know what, I don't need to be paid. 
to run YND. I don't need to, you know, to to have anything. I I used to 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 host YND with a, with a small phone uh, that could not even uh, host three applications because I am a partner. I was not worried about what I do here. What I was important, important to me was to execute and make change in the community. So with these nuggets, Pastor, thank you so much for you know having your time with us, and we are looking forward to gather more questions in the chat box and they will allow me to share those questions with you so that those who ask later, they will also get some responses. For those who want to get in touch with me, in case you don't have my number, my phone number is 0777 526 uh, You can uh, ask your question, then I will direct them to, to Pastor Plan and you get your favorable response. Once again, Pastor, thank you so much. I'm handing over the time to our MC to close. Over to you, Thompson. Uh, seems like I can't see my MC. Um, okay, oh, she's back. Over to you, uh, my MC. Thank you, Mr. Tinashe, and thank you, Pastor Pilani. This was truly an insightful session. I believe we've all been impacted, and as someone who's at STAR, I did not really see myself as a partner. I saw myself as a beneficiary, and now today, everything has changed. I'm starting to think of what can I do for my community? I don't want to be a beneficiary anymore. I want to be a partner, and I believe everyone is starting to think of what they can do for their community with what they have, and stop thinking of maybe 10 years down the line when I have well, thank you, Pastor Pilani, once again. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me talk about the weekly announcement. Remember to like, comment, and share young and dynamic posts on Facebook pages and Sasai channel. And Global, Global Intercessors platform is open 24-7. Remember to connect anytime to pray for yourself and the nation of Zimbabwe. And tomorrow, Sunday, is an important day. Star Leadership Academy will be hosting in the SLA class of 2023 take over. So the 24 hours, they will be praying, praying. So if anyone wants to join, pray for anything, Zimbabwe, your exams, your life, join Global Intercessors with us tomorrow. It's Tata for now from me and the young. Team. See you next week, same place, same time.